And we're live! Alright. Welcome to basically tabletop. We're we're painting. We're paint we're 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 rubbing brushes on little plastic men. That's what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> Alright, you guys know the drill. You've been on YouTube before. If you like the stream, you hit the like button. If you like the paint job, hit subscribe. If you love the stream, then check out the Patreon in the description. I am going to work on that intro. I am I'm workshopping that. <clears throat> it's a work in progress. Uh, also, please tell me in the chat, can you hear the music? Is it good? Uh, do you like the camera angles? I mean, I'm sure I'm sure there's there's some way I could do this this better. Uh, yeah, uh, tell me how I'm screwing this up, and I will fix it. Uh, all right. So, we are doing Witzgar's Assault Intercessor. I know, it looks very much like an Intercessor right now, let me tell you. So, I've done all the base coats. Uh, as you can probably pretty easily tell, there's there's blacks, there's silvers, there's a lot of red. A lot of red on Witzgar's. Well, Witzgar's third company, anyway. <clears throat> Bye, mate. Said dinner. It was good. Uh, all right. So, what we're going to be doing today, which you read, in this, you read in the title, you know. It's going to be a lot of shading involved, as it's the next step of where we're at. I'm also going to be showing a very easy, anyone can do it level. Oop, I wanted a nail, not you to come right off. Okay, we'll glue that on. We'll glue that back on the nail later. Turn that, looking like rawhide. It's gonna be real simple. It's only gonna take a couple minutes. It's gonna be great, and I gotta, I gotta glue that. There you go. Nail is stuck. <clears throat> uh, we're also gonna be going over basics of white armor, uh, because you know, white armor generally considered to suck. It's hard to paint white armor, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Hold on, I'm just moving around my screens. I want to see I want to see all the stuff you know that stuff's probably fine I think I can just stick to this one screen okay cool so let's get into it I need to adjust the legs because this desk is a little weird for us angling but it's okay it's all gonna be okay so I'm gonna put that down we got our wonderful incredible Red, knocked it over. Red, <laughs> red grass, red pellet. I love them. Get them, buy them. Red grass. Do you ever see this? I will sell your stuff out of my hand, door door. It's so good. Uh, <laughs> I got one a while back. Never looked back. Also got a well used. I try. I tried to rinse it out and clean it back up, as uh, some people have. Um, Gone out of the way to tell me how dirty I leave my my the master's brush cleaner and preserver. Can definitely recommend this all day every day. <coughs> Pardon me. Simple jar of water. I don't remember where I got this. I think it was like a tiny mayo jar or some 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 something weird weird like that. Uh, I don't know. I've been using it for like two and a half three years. Uh, I got no complaints. It works fine. It's perfectly fine. Paper towel. Uh, actually, no, it's not a paper towel. I'm used to using a paper towel. This is a napkin. Um, which actually, I think I'm. I kind of like better because already pre, it, it like comes in a um, really convenient size and shape, and thickness for general usage. Yeah, I'm all like, ooh, water. Let's do that. That'll fix this. Hydration, extremely important. Stay hydrated while you're painting, especially when you're doing it under bright lights, for streaming. It gets hot. Real hot. Alright, so... First thing I'm going to do is re-glue this back on a nail, because that was dumb. Loctite Precision Pen Super Glue. Definitely recommend that. I don't need nearly that much glue, but we'll, we'll go with it. Show this to a local... Uh, Drukari player, Dark Eldar player, lost his mind because he's 
used to doing like spikes and stuff with like normal glue or, like plastic glue you know what's great about super glue is why I, I always recommend using super glue over anything else I would, no matter what you're doing super glue uh, a you can break the stuff apart later if you really want to if you really gotta you can break mo most things back apart you, you, if it, you decide you don't you don't like how you did the head you can pop that right off but it's not gonna pop off with just like falling off the table all right now I can just sit for a minute dries pretty fast and also you can paint glued stuff together now as long as you don't go overboard with the glue uh, got stuff in my nerves uh, as long as you don't go overboard with the glue it's great the uh, you know I paint my stuff to practically completion in pieces and I just super glue it together so easy it's so good so we're gonna do shading so I'm gonna take all these off the cork which I do for like storage reasons so they're not I would accidentally just you know crush a piece or you know and they're all together whole model one cork you're good to go to start this um, you know what? Here's what we're gonna do because it's part it's part of the process. I'm gonna start with the leather. I start with the leather because the last step of that is shading, and that will just lead us right into the shading. And a big part of the shading will also be the white armor. How to shade white armor? There's a lot of conversation about how to shave shade white armor appropriately, and I'm gonna show you one of the best ways I've found, bar none. And it's not that hard. It, it takes some specific supplies, but nothing you can't get at your LGS. Now, if I could just breathe out my left nostril. Jeez. Uh, can I get some Fs in the chat for... Or in the Fs in the comment section as well, if you're watching later, for my left nostril. It's not having a good time. Alright. <clears throat> Getting this. A little white spot that's not supposed to be there, so I'm gonna get a little bit of um, this base brown, Mornfink brown. Simple, simple. Give that a shake. Give it a real shake. One of these days, I saw this on. Um, I know they're very controversial, but I like their hobbying guides. Uh, I saw this on Spiky Bits. They had a thing on um, uh, must have hobby. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, like hobby gadgets is what they what they had. Uh, it was a huge list of stuff, and I did end up getting quite a bit of it. Um, what I get? I have to go over the list. It's been a long time. Uh, but I I do I did end up with like a lot of it, like a lot of it. Um, but one thing they had. I don't have it yet because it's a little on the expensive side. It's like a hundred something, like 150 bucks or something like that, or even maybe even a little bit more. It was some kind of I don't know what the hell it's meant to be used for, but basically it's like it's like a uh, how do I describe this? It's like a circular cone. It's like a cone. It's like a shallow cone or like a round pyramid. Uh, and on the top is a little like grabber thing, like like you would see on like a um, like a hand drill, where you put the bit in and you you spin it and it, and it closes in on the bit. I'm just gonna fix that. Oop, I'm gonna go up closer to the camera, F fix that little white dot, <clears throat> and see if there's any anywhere I need more brown in there. So anyway, you take your pot of paint and you put it in there and you you screw it shut I also realize I am nowhere near the camera I need, I need my that's why I need the other screen is to make sure I'm putting I'm putting this in the camera view and not nine seconds later when I'm doing this stuff and I'm completely gone so okay that's fixed I don't, I don't need that anymore so you put it in there and you secure put the pot in the top and secure it and you turn it on and it spins it extremely fast I have no idea what it's actually meant for because I'm pretty sure it's not meant for paint. <coughs> <coughs> Choking on my own spit. That's what we get. That that's what you get for live. You get that. If it was like a normal video, I would edit that out. Wouldn't have had to deal with that. It's okay now. Uh, 
so it spins the paint super fast. I did not think about how the mic arm uh, <laughs> entails uh, me getting any of my paints. So I gotta like reach like, eh, right in front of the camera to reach any of my stuff. This is uh, version like 0, 0.00 like 2 of this set. This will be becoming vastly smoother over time. Don't worry. So, what I've got here, Pallid Witch Flesh, is one of my, probably one of my favorite paint colors. I wouldn't say the paint is that good, but the color is great. The colors, use it for a lot of stuff. By a lot of stuff, I mean like three stuff. Three things. But, <laughs> but, hey, uh, it's good for those three things. It's, um, it's, it's, it's leather, it's, uh, purity seals and its faces <laughs> That's what it's good for uh, Or at least that's, that's what I use a lot for I'm sure there will be plenty of other things In time But it's good for those So I've got You know I think I need my finer brush for this That's okay A little bit of paint gone it's not, it's not a big deal I think that was like you know A twentieth of a cent worth of paint It's okay it's okay, we'll make some mistakes. We'll turn them into birds, right? That that's what artists do, they turn mistakes into birds. Or bushes. It's birds or bushes. So something like that. So I got I got my fine brush. I get get in the camera. You can you can do this, Mike. Fine brush. <laughs> fine brush in front of the camera, specifically. <laughs> Always remember to put it in front of the camera. And we're just going to nicely highlight the brown with the pallid witch flesh. There's probably nothing new to most of you. It's like, you know, th that that's what you do. Is you put the light, uh, light brown to, to, I don't know, what is this? Like, like off. It's not like peach. It's like light beige, I guess. I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, point is, you do your highlight. So we'll just do that for a minute. I'm trying to make sure I get this. This angle is new to me. It's new to me. It's new to you. New to me. We'll get there. It's a cycle of improvements. Watch. In a year, I won't even think about it. This will be like perfect focus. And you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing at all times. The camera focus might even be sharper in and of itself which would be great so, i mean this is a good camera and i got a lot of lenses i just haven't quite tuned it in yet but i gotta start doing something <clears throat> and i wouldn't worry too much about your cleanliness with this or even even making sure the layer is opaque in fact doing a give, giving it a little bit of transparency um or roughness will actually help in the long run that's what we're going to do. I mean, you can't see. My hand is, like, way in the way. We'll get there. Enjoy the music. That's... That's your primary job right now. <laughs> just enjoy the music. Just, just chill and hang out. It's all good. Try to... Get in that little crease from the trigger guard. Also, anyone paint? If anyone else is painting right now, tell us what you're painting. I see one person watching. And I'm still not sure if that means it's me or if it's not, or if, or if it's actually uh, someone watching. I really, I really can't. I haven't figured out that system yet. And no one talks about it because you know the average stream is not you know uh, uh, maybe one person. But that's that's okay. I think most people probably start with videos and then move to streams after they have a little bit on YouTube. I mean, I could be wrong on that. I don't watch... I started watching one person that seems like a dedicated streamer uh, on YouTube that I'm pretty sure didn't start with videos. Uh, she was playing like a Dark Souls playthrough, which is pretty, pretty funny. someone that's been all three games um 
it was fun watching someone like learn it for the first time i'm a little jealous that she was playing remastered because she gets to choose the number of items she uses in the menu in dark souls 1 i still have like the prepare to die which means uh you know one at a time oh boy you know it's 30 you know souls of nameless soldier you got yeah one at a time Woo. <clears throat> i was really hoping to not be this phlegmy when i started but i had a pretty bad cold not covid bad cold get in the camera bad cold uh i'm just gonna keep saying it over and over again <laughs> wash your hands uh, <laughs> um uh, what, what was that two weeks ago three weeks ago now i don't know anymore time's been funky lately can't tell what, what day is today wednesday perfect warhammer wednesday that's what we're doing we're doing some warhammer so it's still like a bit of a tail end on it I'm just a little little phlegmed a little flummy it's all good though Get in the camera, Mike. You can do it. I believe in you. You know, I need, I need like, so in, in, in movies, right? And when the actors uh, interacting with like a CGI elements you know let's say um you know what? just because i'm really familiar with it let's say the lord of the rings or like the hobbit uh let's say when when sir ian mckellen gandalf is talking to all the dwarves in bilbo's house because they have to shoot him differently so they can get the sizes correct he's actually just by himself at a table surrounded by like laser pointers showing him where everyone is which i think is just hilarious so what i need is like a laser holographic cube <laughs> or or like a um uh uh like um like just uh like a like just a range thing of lasers coming from the camera to show me you know where where i can where i can put stuff <laughs> What if I could do that? What if I got like, if I got like four laser pointers and I taped them around the lens of the camera? Oh, that looks, that would be so cool. That might even work. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Um, or is it? I don't know. Are there any photographers that have played around with that? Can someone, can someone tell me if that's like not a stupid idea? I think it, I think it's kind of clever. Actually, let me get over here and do this little pouch on this guy. Get a little get a little my, little my paints off the... So here's one of the best things about wet palettes, okay? You do it correctly. Get in the frame. Meh. Okay, can I get closer? How close can I get? I can get, like, here. Okay. Uh, what's talking about? Wet palettes. Okay, wet palettes great thing about wet palettes okay you do you set up properly either your own wet palette which i have done it is it is possible to make a good palette yourself it's not even hard i'll even i'll even walk you through it in a minute there you go bonus bonus content told you we go over other useful stuff uh <laughs> but uh it'll effectively thin your paint for you more often than not just by putting it on it because it'll draw all the moisture up from the sheet beneath it and the sponge beneath that that actually has like most of the moisture um get that little crease of the pouch flap and it's just you know what this is actually a little bit of the technique right here it's just it's it's like aggressive dry brushing it'll be a lot of that okay so i'm gonna start on the big thing the Mm. the pistol 
um, holster. That's the name for it. I know words. <laughs> so we're gonna get. We're gonna spread. We're gonna really like spread out. That's not really in a frame, but kind of is. Spread out our our um, witch flesh. Same color that we used on a highlight. And it's gonna be like a uh, effectively a guided dry brushing sort of kind of. So you, so we know there's like creases on it, very mild creases. It's gonna like we're just gonna like dry brush it effectively. But like instead of dry brushing uh, the edges, we're dry brushing the flat. Okay, and you get a nice. You want to go until there's areas, there are areas with a lot, but there are areas without a lot. Like, you don't want, you don't want whole coverage of dotage. You want it to, to, to cycle between the types, okay? And then you, what you're going to do is, you're going to do it over everything that's like that. I'm going to need some more witch flesh. Um, this sounds very weird. I'm going to spread out a little bit more. And on top of that... Unlike say, you know, if I were to if I were to just do like standard dry brush, right? I'd get like a bit of paint and I'd roll the the amount off I don't want, so it's not too much, and then I'd roll it around my napkin for a little bit or my paper towel or what have you, you know, your uh the the your whatever your thing is, your your equivalent. And then I would I would do like this. On the corners but no what we're gonna do is like direct rub it, it's a rub it's like rubbing it's, it's not like rubbing meat of it I've either sort it's but it's just, uh, so we're just so yeah we're just rubbing the surface of it and so effectively it's it's changed it from that that deep dark brown you know, maybe I can get it close to the camera so you can really see what this looks like. Will this focus? See if I can manually focus it. Eh. So kind of. No, maybe the other way. Oh. I know how to use cameras. Get. You're in the lens. Excellent. That's that's. Well, now I know how to do James Bond. <laughs> okay. I guess I'm just gonna pull it back a little bit. Okay, I, yeah, I can kind of see it now. Okay, you see how, like, it's dark brown in the low pouches, both the highlight and then on the, and on the main holster, it's lighter now. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to really play around. Bear with me while I play around with my camera lenses in the future. Th th this will get better, I guarantee it. Uh, so yeah, so it's now got that, that sheen to it, but we're not done. Um, I do need some more witch flesh. I ran out. All dried up. Um, we'll do all the pouches, and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, I am starting to think maybe concurrent viewers is... Like, I, like, as soon as that's one, there is more people, because currently I have zero. I, I, I said, I'm going to get more paint, and it went down to zero. Guess they didn't want me to get more paint. That's okay. <clears throat> it's all a work in progress. We'll get there. Don't worry. I'll become a real boy. <laughs> I'll become a real streamer. One day, I need a lot less paint on this brush. Okay. Alrighty. I got too much. I might have too much. Do I have too much? It's really hard to tell. It's a little, it is a little finicky. You gotta really, like, but still on the, I still prefer for this technique doing it on the, the wet palette. That out of the way so you can see on the web palette 
And then we're just gonna get everything to look like our holster there. On that pouch. Look at that pouch. Also, I'm realizing some of my blacks did not become very black. I have to add some more black to that before I can highlight them. You know, that's okay, because they don't need to be shaded because they're black, so that can wait until the next, the, you know, after we focus on the other stuff we already set out to do this stream. I'm trying to show... You can't really see it. I'm trying to show the top of this being done, but it's just like... You can't see it with the camera. Okay. So yeah, that looks pretty good, actually. So that's that piece. Go and do it on the other piece. You know, in the front pouch here. And I'm not going to worry too much about getting on the other stuff around it, because I already got to clean up those areas with white. With white, 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 white. <laughs> oh, my nose. My poor nose. F and shots for my nose. If you're in the chat, tell me what you are liking about the chats. Tell me, are liking about the stream. Tell me what you're not liking about the stream. Tell me how to make this better. I want to make you people happy. And I want this guy to look good. That still has too much paint because that made like a flat out stripe. I'm going to do a little bit on a napkin because there clearly is something wet on there. And we don't want wet. That's, that just went like all over the place. Damn. Why are you so wet? I don't want you wet. I'm doing it on the napkin. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so that's gonna be a little, little rough, but we can fix that. If I can just... I can't get anything to come off it. Come on, work for it! Work for me! Work. I was gonna say work with me, but really, work for me. You're a paintbrush. You were my tool, and no, you don't get workers' rights, because you're not the worker, you do no work. You exist, this is all you do actively. This just, this just got pretty weird, <laughs> not gonna lie. Just trying to, trying to get up on the side here, which is gonna be visible, so I kind of need it to work right now. Is really messing up my brush. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little rinsing here and then try to reshape this. Also, I am just knocking that cork all over the place. I don't. I keep forgetting to use that cork because like I, I used to just use the nails, and then like at some point I was like, oh hey, the cork like gives me more grab points, and then I, I don't know. I just didn't, just didn't like sit as a habit. It's weird. Trying to like un 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 mess up this brush. This brush got pretty messed up. Eh. We're getting there. Don't worry. I, I guess it's fine. Whatever. I'll fix it more when I need to do other stuff. Focus on what you need to do right now. That's... It helps. Yeah. Right. Let's see if I didn't put too much paint or too wet. Let's, let's see what we got. Anything? Some kind of color. Oh, I got a little bit of color! A little bit of color! Yeah, actually, it's a little wet, but it's okay. It's something, you know, I'll take it at this point. I just want to be done with this stuff. I've been doing it for too long. We're a half hour in, and we've just, we, we, we've not even finished the rawhide. Rawhide. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Now I'm going to fix this brush. 
a good rinse. Put in the soap, shampoo, conditioner, rinse, rinse, rinse. You know, you get the idea. What is this technically called again? Because I, I like to call it shampoo and conditioner because it, it kind of is. What is this actually called? Cleaner and preserver. That sounds like shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> It's hair, it's hair in a brush, it's shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> it's what it is, okay? Can't can't tell me otherwise. Like how I can consistently get my head in the frame, I can't keep the model in the frame. Meh. What is this? What is Notification. Notification. Okay. This. What? Ugh. Whatever. Yeah. Don't mind me just making noises. It happens. I I do that. What? Uh... All right. <clears throat> Let's get to the shading. Let's start shading this rawhide. It's gonna look real good. <clears throat> Agrax Earth Shade. You know it, you love it. Where is it? It's, I can't see in the frame. Oh, because I'm looking at the wrong screen. You know it, you love it. Agrax Earth Shade. Okay. Yeah. Meh. <laughs> A weak little nerd arms cannot open the pot. Okay. Decent bit of aggro. I'm. I just not. Not even thin. Just. 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 Your leather. Douse it. Like not like. Like start. Start late and figure out your thickness as you go. Like or your your depth of color alteration. My left nostril. No. Suffering. Okay. Get that Agrax all over it. Everything. Shade the whole thing. You know what this technique is? I forgot to do the back. Can you see the back? Will you be able to see the back? I think that's against his leg. Where's the other piece? No, leg goes forward. How much will you see the back here? Mm, like, not at all. Okay, I'll just darken the crap out of it. See, these are necessary shirk. How do I show you this? I don't, I don't know. Necessary shortcuts. Now, here's the trick, though, if you're gonna do this. You gotta do this in sub-assemblies. <laughs> so you can still paint, you know, the majority of it. All good. Get in the frame. How dare. How dare you, Mike. Got a frame again. It's not good. Alright. You really want to get shader on these highlights. You wanna, you wanna dumb all this down, dull it down, beat the spirit out of it. All the color. Not gonna take any color from them. Just gonna get, get in there. Ooh, yeah, my blacks over here need a few more coats, definitely. I also forgot to dry brush the bottom of those pouches, too, but you know, I, I, think it, I think it'll be okay. It'll be okay. It'll be our secret. You and me. No one else has to know. <laughs> there you go. Nice and thick on this front one because I put so much color on it. And again, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about. I will eventually figure out this camera angle. I wonder if I went higher. Ah, the boy behind me. That might not work better. So I can keep it in front of me. Okay, so, we've agraxed our brown stuff, and I uh, itch my face, side of my head. Uh, <laughs> but while we got the agrax out, let's do the red. So this is, this guy, this has got corn red on it. Corn flakes red. Uh, all the stuff here is corn flakes red. 
and we're going to use agrax to shade that because the brown keeps it warmer and if we were to do like null oil which is black then black is a cold color so this keeps it like as a redder red at the end of the day when you're done after you've highlighted it it will keep a consistency of red now if you wanted to do I'm not sure what you would do a cold red for but theoretically you could do it what I would do with the stuff I have do a cold red do corn red um, corn flake red and I'd go uh, non oil and then what I use for my highlight which is I'm looking over at my pots here wild rider red which is actually like a reddish orange and then I would stall that down with blood letter glaze which I know you can't really get anymore unless you want to pay obscene prices on eBay but you can make that effectively I want to say it's Mephisto red or it's um or you know what the other that's what you do you get i haven't done this in a really long time and it wasn't with this color so i might have to sell you off but you take game ink game ink red it's an ink paint so it's very liquid but also very rich and you mix it with a ton of lamian medium if i remember correctly and you can make a glaze like that uh, you can actually, technically, you take enough lamia medium and put any color into it and it will eventually hit glaze consistency. So I guess at that point, then you could alter it any way you want. But the, the idea is to dull the orange into more of a red while the dark red is, uh, while the dark red is, is black shaded. So it's very, um, very muted and uh cold i guess if you wanted to go for like a really hmm i'm something chaos is coming to mind as to where a good place to put it but i i don't know you want to really put that despair in the red you know what i mean no okay fine don't follow me artistically I need to get in the camera frame it's okay a little bright spot on that feather well hopefully that will just go down with the shader so I've been using a new primer I think I mentioned this on my last stream but that was a month ago so I'm not totally sure it is uh, Steinol Res and I'm having mixed feelings about it but it's very likely extremely likely in fact that it may actually be me and that I am still getting used to an airbrush so my priming may not be exactly stellar get in the frame <laughs> uh, I'm now gonna be shooting so I put in the chain sword the chain swords the little nozzle coming out and then the little vents in here I put a little bit of red I fill I fill them with red all the inset the inset I nearly went in a very different direction. Insets, where <laughs> where it goes into the model, and it's clear that that is a vent. Put some red in there. Put some corn cornflake red, and then a little bit of agrax on this outer red. This outer red. This outer. You can see it now. Doesn't look red on your screen. Looks practically brown. It's corn cornflake red is very dark red. That's okay though. It's all gonna be much shinier later. But a little bit on there. Just uh just to give a little bit of depth. But uh, I put the agrax in the vents as well. <sighs> ah Why? I was not stuffy all day. Why am I stuffy now? Now of all times. <laughs> ah! Okay. 
And then when we do the red highlight, we get in there just a little, little bit, bit, just to give the impression of heat coming out of the vents, like like red hot heat. Like this engine's really going as it's ripping through Xenos. It's gonna be great. Get some shader on this purity seal. Get in camera frame. Well, eventually, I gotta remember. I gotta. Okay, so my mic is right here, like right below. And I need to remember to put my model that I am painting for you above the mic. That's my reference point. In reality, I was making like I was joking about the lasers. I might I might try that just like as a joke. Get some you know dollar store laser printers. Uh, laser printers. Get some laser printers. There we go. Laser pointers. <laughs> I'm gonna laser print some uh, some models here. <laughs> laser pointers and tape them on the camera and see what happens oh that'd be that'd be great get in frame get in the frame Meh. <laughs> you can do this you can stay in frame I don't know if it's if these okay so this is why I brought the, the primer okay let me, let me get back to that so it, it it's just on everything just kind of thick uh because when i was doing it thin it was like it would dry and then it would start cracking like 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 pottery or 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 what's the other thing like 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 porcelain or you know like um cracked glazes on pottery that's what i'm thinking of so I got a little bit of shade around that oh actually well I use a different brown shader for the purity sim uh, purity seals. I really gotta get a better camp uh, lens focus on that. I was kind of rushing because I had already planned to do this today. <laughs> Start back up today. And a part of this is that I got a new router uh, to hopefully increase. Oh, my signal strength turns out. Didn't even matter. My current one had plenty of plenty of connection to do 1080p streaming. Um, the music turned off, so pardon me while I restart that. I have currently a, just under an hour of these beats ready to go. Alright, expand that. I'll come in time. Everything will get better later. So I got the router. And like three... For some reason, it didn't like the rest of the network. So for like three hours messing with it. And I learned at the end, didn't even really need it. And it wasn't going to physically work because I don't have the right kind of Ethernet cable to hit those levels of connection anyway so I put way behind schedule on that did not ever think it, that would take that much out of my day and I had to wait for the uh, the tripod for the camera to arrive from Amazon I have two but I'm in the middle of moving so I don't have them with me I couldn't go and get them until next week for reasons. So I got, so I ordered one from Amazon. Get in the frame. Get in the frame. <laughs> Wait for that to arrive, and then start setting everything up. And it's like it's eight. It's 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 you know it's like quarter of seven. What the hell? So here I am now and tomorrow I'm definitely going to be uh, messing with new camera lenses because this is not exactly the uh, visual fidelity I was hoping for so anything else I got Agrax I got Agrax's eyes and I got I gotta get my thinner brush for that so I'm gonna rinse out my, my thicker brush
You know what this is great because it's all test runs for oh my nose. Give me a moment. One one moment. Hey, did that mute? I oh, know the, the mute button on this is weird. If you heard stuff, you heard stuff. Uh, where are my eyes? I gotta aggrax his eyes. It's an important part of a good glowy eye lens. Honestly, is you just real nice. You start your corn red. Get that earth shade in there nicely. You gotta be nice with it. You don't want it going everywhere. You just want it inside the eye lens. That's it. Now it glows. No, I'm sure. <laughs> if only it were that easy. Alright. That's our earth shade. X. Yeah. Is that no oil? You know, now that I got this camera set up, I may also do just standalone videos on stuff. Leave, leave in the comments stuff you want for standalone videos. I could do stuff on not just painting, but a lot of, especially like modeling stuff, like how to how to pin stuff, how to magnetize stuff, especially like little annoying things, like hands and guns and or or. Here's one that's come up recently for me, uh, uh, telling other people big stuff, like flyers. Um, my, I have a Storm Raven, and every weapon option on it is magnetized, and it also has its wings magnetized, and it's magnetized to its fly stand for transportation purposes. And I could do a video just going over how I did that. Um, yeah, I, I could do stuff like that. That'd be that'd be cool. How to magnetize a storm raven for easy transport. I might do that later. I feel like I feel like there's a demand for that. Very niche one. But it's there. I part of me would like to wait until it's painted, but it's not gonna be painted until like I don't know, twenty, twenty-seven. <laughs> no, no, not that, not that far away. It's just, it's just not exactly high on my priority list at the moment. I just realized I didn't do any of that shading on camera. I am, <laughs> I am still quite bad at this. This doesn't even have anything I shade with no oil. What am I doing? Focus. Just get the model above the mic and paint it like it's your job because it is. This is a the <clears throat> Swiss scars are a paid commission. And then talk while you paint. Remember to talk while you paint. That's what I gotta do. I remember to put it above the mic. To put paint on it correctly. And to talk while I do it. And yes, I am currently 
I, I am in fact uh, pouring Nolan oil on these on this backpack using a highlight brush. You know why? Because it's easier to control, so it's less likely for me to put Nolan oil where I don't want it. I was using a bigger brush, putting the uh, lead belcher on, and there's a little bit of lead belcher I gotta clean up later. Get in in frame. I don't remember getting this song. <laughs> I mean, I have to review this playlist. I did not even realize there was a song like this, and then it, that's kind of funny. So what I gotta do in the future, I gotta find a camera lens. Um, I might also see if I have like a vivid filter to colorize this all a bit more, make because that make a lot all of this much easier to see. Um, you know, I'm not worried about the filter, you know, disrupting your guys' ability to copy this because I don't. You're gonna be using the same materials as me, more likely than not. So it's not like my camera is going to change your results. So. A vivid filter. And some way of, you know, I think I have, see, there you go. I got a little bit of non oil streak on the hand. And now I have to clean that later. Um, I just got a whole bunch on the pauldron. No, I got. Well, I got. I had to clean that anyway. It's a bit more. It might be some. Might be some. Some cleaning uh, on the stream. How do I angle this so you can see what I'm doing? I'm doing like the back of the bolt pistol. There you go. This isn't awkward for me at all. It's okay though. All gonna be okay. Get all that. Get all that in. Oh, you're gonna do magnetizing basics, theories, principles, execution. Because there is a bit of a theory and some some basic principles, I would argue, as someone that magnetizes the holy utter crap out of my models. You probably, you know, if you if you watched the beginning of this, you saw some of my models uh, shown as taken apart to show how they're magnetized. Um, there there are some rules to it to ensure that it it gets you the result you want you know so that's probably nice in there get in there all right it's nice and shaded move on to the chain sword this will be the last of the null oil i'm pretty sure no there's a, there's a little bit on i forgot the cork actually we'll do that first the chain sword take a few more minutes Shade this metal gear. So shade it. Shade this metal gear solid. And because the shade has finished now on the leather, I get this up. Oh, I see it now. It's nice and it's it's leather tones and it's like it's like that rough uh, it's like that rugged like not not dusty but like uh, 
That's like a bit of like fuzz on rawhide now. I wish I could get it closer and it doesn't just blur. I wish there was a way I could really get this up to the camera. <sighs> well, in any event, if you follow me at my, on my Instagram at, at basically underscore tabletop or on Facebook, basically tabletop, uh, you'll, you'll see pictures of this guy when he's done and you'll see the results of that leather in finer detail. Now let's do the chainsaw. Fun! Weapons. Painting weapons is fun. Get that. Get that in the frame. What are you doing? Okay. I really gotta get it better. You, can, you, you guys can't see crap, can you? Alright. Well, I know the music works. I do gotta fix the camera. I don't think the angle... Nah, the angle could use some improvement. I think I gotta get farther up and back behind me. Like I said, this is not even close to the end results. Uh, you know, set up for this, get in frame. The end results uh, set up for all this, for lights, for camera. Actually, later, lights are pretty good. I, th I think I think the lights are actually pretty good. Um, the camera needs a better angle. The camera needs a better lens for this specifically. And I need to not be so flemmy. To not to not have a stuffed nose. Again, why it's stuffed now? I don't know. I wasn't stuffed earlier. It was fine all day. Very weird. Yeah, in frame. I nearly pulled it out of frame. I, pull, I just pull it, pull it right out of frame. You don't get to see this. Why should you get to see this? I don't know. Now, if this were one of my guys, a Raven Guard, with the black armor, I'd be using, I would be using a much bigger brush, as many of you are probably thinking, why is he not using a bigger brush? It's because non oil streaks on white are really annoying. Yes, I got a little bit on the handle, but that handle is actually supposed to be a different color. Which color? I don't fully remember. I think it's supposed to be black. Hold on. Check one of my other models. I've done for these guys already. Yes, it's supposed to be a black handle, but I have to paint more of uh, the back. What is that called? <laughs> what is this back hip and belt area? That hip seal? Yeah, that. everything is going on real dark and gritty. This. Uh, but that specific guy, that specific guy is really dark and gritty. I'm not sure. I think it's just how the um, the primer went on. Even though it's white, you'd think that would brighten stuff, but it's not. Everything's darker. It's weird. Well, no, no, I was done. So that is shading. I didn't go over any like really advanced techniques. I guess. I guess. Okay. <clears throat> I guess one example is if you wanted to be more precise on say the angel bit here you could get a brighter version afterward where um, if you put the, hi the highlight on it it'll be a lot richer it's also and I might I might start doing this on on uh, there's a name for that what is that called I don't remember help me out But putting some blood glaze, uh, blood letter, blood, blood glazer, yeah, uh, that that's a thing. Uh, I, well, yeah, they they call it something else, but it's basically blood. Uh, blood letter glaze on it and pop the red out a bit more. It, it tones down the toner down. That is agrax. 
<sighs> All right. And notifications. Why do I have not notifications? Oh, different. Well, that, that's gray and all, but that's not relevant to this. Anyway. Ah, oh, man, I get tired of this day. Oh, it's not even late for me. Alright, we gotta do the main event. White armor. Here we go. I might just do a section and then call it a night because uh, a bunch of stuff's been weird still I'm still breaking in the setup and everything but I know a lot of my technicals are good zero drops frames my connection's been excellent the entire time um, I say that and I had like a split second where I said no data and I, that was weird but I didn't drop any frames so I don't know what happened there but uh, yeah, best I can tell, everything's been great. Technically, on the software side, software's been great. This, the, the waiting room slideshow is great. Uh, so, we able to snippet of white armor. And I'm gonna do it to completion. And then we're gonna call it. Because I am tired and this camera is not helping much. So, what piece do I want to do? You know, I'll do the top piece here. I'll do the top of this, uh... Or, you know what? The... Well... I'm trying to find a location that goes through all the steps. Yeah, I guess this leg will work fine. It's whatever. So, what we're gonna need... Where is it? This? No. The other one. Nope, I was wrong. I had the right one the first time. I have two pots of those. I'm trying to keep track of which one is the one that I've used. Which one has not been opened yet. Where is my lamian? Okay. So, here's the trick. What we're going to do is we're going to start with a general shading, general recess shading. That's the keyword, recess. You never, you don't, you're not going to shade anything across the surface. It's not, it's not like a lot of the other stuff we just shaded. Uh, it's going to be a recess shade of contrast apothecary white. Which you got to really shake up. Then, uh, I'm just going to have four step five steps yeah I might not go all the way I'll just I'll just tell you I'll tell you though and we'll do some of it next is where where it's a deeper recess a stage two recess I'm gonna take a mixture of apothecary white contrast black Templar just black and lamia medium and the mix is going to be two, we'll say two brushfuls, because that's how I keep track of it. Same brush, all the way. You rinse in between. Two brushes of contrast, put on your wet palette. One brush of contrast, uh, on con yeah, of course, on con yeah. Uh, one of Black Templar, and one of Lamia Medium. You stir that up nicely. It's like a, it's like a neutral gray, with a little, little bit of darkness in it. And then you do that on your uh, medium depth. And lastly, on your truly deep bits, it's going to be either known oil or for me, what I do is on like the lines, the thin, the thin lines there that look like like the Death Star trenches. That's what comes to my mind. <laughs> Nostrils. Ah, on the Death Star trenches. <laughs> what I use is a 
is a Micron pen. It's a Micron 005 in black. I really wish they made these in white. If they made these in white, it'd be amazing for Raven Guard. Because I could I do white scripting on their armor. Much easier. Because I just write on it. This is how I do scripting on uh, purity seals and stuff like that. Because it's effectively, it's like a sharpie, but absurdly thin. Thin, 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 tiny, tiny, tiny. It's actually just the right size to go into these lines. So I'm not even going to shade those with the other stuff. I am just going to use the pen. And that's how you cheat. And good painting is good cheating. More often than not. Because <laughs> uh, it, it does things faster. It does things more effectively. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just gonna drag this nice and flat with my highlight brush. So flat highlight brush is not that big. I'm just going to... All the recesses I see. Anything where there's a dip in frame. Whenever there's a f dip in the frame. Try not to use a lot of it. I don't need a lot of it. Because it because its transparency is on your team. It's about shading, it's not about changing the color necessarily. So we still want it to look white, just slightly darker white. And I'm just gonna try to rub off a little bit of that corner there, because that was a bit too far down. I really gotta get this focus much better and there's going to be a little bit of layering involved with this in the f sense that I need to come out from this side when I do the mixture I am going to actually do a thin kind of like a highlight like a, like a, an edge highlight kind of deal on these bigger ones on top of where I've already put the gray so like these deep lines I'm gonna go way in it with the tip with the mixture when I come back to it in a second oop that was sloppy so, so after you've done all the shading all the steps of shading Next step is to do a clean highlight. Um, you know, that's that's going to be all the mixture inside that that big peg location. So, all right. So, I'm going to... Uh, yeah, I'll put some in here. Clean that up later. Clean that kneecap later. Take care of that kneecap. No, you worry. I'll take care of it. So that's the lower leg. I'm just going to do lower leg for now. Oh, I missed a bit. I missed a bit. I missed it. There we go. I'll take off the top excess because it's, it's about subtlety. I missed on the other side too. Just gonna use the mostly a tip for those parts. All right, so I'll try to get this closer to the camera, and now that already looks a lot more defined, right? I missed some in the crease of, so I know I'm getting tired. I gotta focus on the camera and talking and painting and being tired. Okay. We're okay. We can do this. It's been a long day, but it's okay. All gonna be okay. We're gonna get through this together. All right. So now it's much more defined. Uh, there's a little bit of cleanup to be done later, but we'll worry about that and my nostrils uh, when we get up to a cleanup phase, which is nowhere near now. So. I'm gonna take, rinse my brush off a little bit, get excess off. I'm gonna shake this up again. 
I'm going to try to do this where it's on camera. So I'm going to take two brushes of this. And you just increase the ratio if you need like a bunch of it. Like, you know, six white, three Templar, three uh, medium. So I'm going to rinse that out nicely. What I, what I do for reference is, is I push it against the glass right underneath the lip there. And I, I spin it around. Now as long as you do that and you use the preserver stuff, it's usually okay. So we're going to take one nice thing of black and mix that in. And it's become much darker gray, but not quite black. And then I'm going to put in a medium, and it's going to thin it down, and it's actually going to brighten it a little bit. So it becomes a much more in-between. By low, by low, I mean a low, low. But, you know, it'll become, it'll become a lot less on the model because it's much thinner. It's much more transparent. Ah. All right. So let's get in it. So this hair. There's a hair on my brush. There you go. The hair in my dirt. Okay. So with the tip, get nice in there with the tip. It's like reverse uh, highlighting. In the sense that, like the higher the, the higher the uh, area is raised, the lighter the color. In this, the um, closer it is to the dip, the darker. Same same principle in reverse. So I'm gonna go nice and lightly, keeping way up close to the areas that have. Darkness in them. There's darkness in you. Way up in there. It does It does mean something to put it way up in there where you wouldn't think you see it because your eye just kind of picks it up if you back away and you look at it and it's what it's... It just... It's just darker. It's more defined. It, you, you'll notice. It's worth it. The devil's in the details. And we like the devil. We want more of the devil. More details. <laughs> That's how it works in painting. Let's get right up in there. Right in that crease. looking real nice nice and tight I am out of frame again how dare I just terrible terrible of me all right that's just oh, one more one more spot one more good spot yeah I guess I could put a little bit of a kneecap There we go. Well, I'm gonna foot. Do a little bit right in crease, right in there of a kneecap. There we go. Nice. That is smooth. See, now that's very well defined. Very, very well defined. So, but we're not done yet. No, no, no. So I don't really see much, uh, you know. Yeah, I'll put some non oil in that in that block in the back because the pen doesn't do that as well. No oil. It's weird because I got a motion sensor light on the other side of the room, and it keeps 
keeps turning on when I go to grab a paint. I keep thinking someone's coming down here. Nah, it's just me. But no oil in this box. Darken it up. Gonna use my finger to wipe it a bit, which kind of just smeared it around. But don't worry, we'll be we'll be fixing all that. I'm actually gonna get a glob, and I'm gonna shove it right in there where it can spread. There we go. That's better. <laughs> uh, I guess I smeared it. Don't look great, but it looks better. <laughs> I'll be fixed later, don't worry. Next step, I'm gonna get my bigger brush. I'm gonna do a clean highlight, Corax white, which is an off white. And this is going to start an optical illusion of sharp white edges. That is the name of, name of the game with white. Because our base color is matte, flat, bright white. So how do we get an edge highlight on that? That makes it look sharper and harder. How, how do you even do? So what we're going to do is... Get good framing. And take a you know not quite edge highlight brush come at a bit of an angle so there's a I know you probably can't see this on the camera because it's all white but <laughs> uh, what, what we want is like a millimeter or so of thickness with this Corax white Uh, and I'm talking about the layer that we put on the uh, surfaces we want we're not we're not trying to paint the edge of the surfaces we're trying to paint the surfaces next to the edge we're gonna do we're gonna go around this little box not quite in frame I was almost in frame it almost looked good almost got it not quite. Mm, need more paint. And don't worry if you get like going towards the inside too much or you have like slip ups to where there's like just like a jagged piece of Corax white like going way into your uh, your matte white because it's always clean up later. It's always going to be clean up. It's usually what gets your highlights nice and sharp is to clean up. Because for some reason it's easier to clean up neatly than it is to do the initial highlight.
We are almost there. What am I missing? This big ankle guard. I don't want to quite remove the dark stuff on the inside there. <laughs> Damn nose. It's probably making my voice sound not particularly great either, which isn't good either. Just getting this whole this whole lower leg. We get this whole lower leg all the way to done. Actually, I guess I should do around, and this will help clean it up a little bit around this block, because it's... It's going to be mostly thin, but... I'll help. Help clean it up immediately as well. Alright, great. Okay, so that's the Corax White, I think. Uh, sure, I'll put a little bit on the foot, on the top of the foot. I'll help clean up that shade down there if move it down there there we go noise Need more paint Okay, so now, starting to look quite depth, uh, in depth, not done yet. And then I'm going to fine edge highlight with white scar. Seems appropriate, doesn't it? Now. I'm not going to say I have to use White Scar, because a lot of people don't like White Scar, and I understand why, and I also agree with them. I just haven't gotten a better white edge highlight paint yet, just haven't gotten to it. So get some of that going with my fine highlight brush. My nose. Okay. I'm gonna start on these side ones because it's nice and easy. Nice big. I just uh, just follow right down. Nice edge highlight right on the edge. I'm gonna do a little bit. I have to be very careful guiding this correctly. A little bit right down there. Right between, like right, like over the Corax white, right next to the shade. Is how you want to do that? So it's still some Corax white to give it the uh, impression of depth. Uh, and then the shader on the other side. So it actually looks like a sharp edge, even though it's not, it's not really at all. Here's an efficiency tip for you. 
as you're painting shapes hard shapes like this follow all one uh, side at the same time and do all of it and then switch sides so if you have two things facing you know relatively speaking up you do both of them even though they're not right next to each other but they're in the same area that you're painting and then you move on to the uh, to the other sides Nice fine tip on the brush to then go and do this. Right on that line bordering the shade. Clean, nice, there we go. Follow this up. There we go. Around the ankle guard, which is always a little messy because it's not really a clean edge, so to speak. But, uh,. It's enough that it matters when you put the Korax weight on. I'm putting it on a little thick. I'm not sure I would say that's necessarily the idea, but it, it'll be fine. And same thing on the other side. You want to get, you want to leave the sh leave the shade color. I just put a little bit in the shade in the shade color. And leave the shade color. Where it is? There I go. That was nice and clean. Now good. Now you can't really see it. You see it. Will be much more apparent. Oh no, you can kind of tell. I think a little bit. I got this way bigger. Yeah, you can tell. You can you can see that. I'm messing with my screen. Cool. Yeah. Okay, now we do the inside of this thigh plate, a thigh plate, uh, like shin calf plate, lower leg plate, I just put a bunch in the shader. Going the inside of this box. I really don't know what this is supposed to be. I guess maybe like a magnetic hardening to like put some kind of equipment there. I really have no idea what the intents or purpose of this little incense in the back. Inset. I am so sorry. My nurse. Uh, what this is supposed to be. That's there. So I gotta do something with it. I don't tend to make lights out of it. Because I don't know why the hell would you have lights in the back of your thigh. For any reason. Whatsoever. I don't know why I keep saying thigh. The back of your calf. Cal calf. Cal calf. The back of calf. Yep. Maybe that's why they have it there. To, to commemorate the back of Kalth. I'm highlighting around that shoe. Dem's boots. Doing the top of the boot rim. Nice and clean on that line. It's a bit up here. 
It has technically raised stuff, but it has shader on it, so I'm just gonna put the white over it, more or less. On the edge of the top of the foot plate. They put a lot of bottom heavy protection on these Primaris. Let me tell you. Earlier marks didn't have this extra extra plate here. Definitely not. I'm not saying it's a bad idea, it's just interesting, the design of it. Um However, I wonder if it isn't a bad idea because uh, I don't know what the levels of overextension, which would be the idea, so your, your foot couldn't overextend. It would have to break the armor to overextend it, kind of like how a lot of Mjolnir is designed in its finer feature from Halo. It's designed to uh, prevent overextension by requiring that angle to actually have enough strength to break the armor. Which is incredibly difficult for something like power armor or Mjolnir, Mjolnir armor for that matter. I keep going out of frame so I can get close to my face. I'll get my face closer to you guys to, so I can see what I'm doing. What am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. Fine highlights. So you would have to break the armor. But I wonder if the shape of that makes it harder or easier to break the armor there. Because there are definitely a lot more things. Like there are things in the Halo universe that can just flat out shatter Mjolnir armor. Brutes, hunters, uh any of the mech stuff, like the I think, like, I think the grunt mechs have that kind of strength. Uh, what is it called? Goblins, I want to say. And, uh... And, obviously, like, generalized, you know, mech suits of every kind in the Halo universe. Um, it's the nature of mech suits. But... In 40k, there's a lot more stuff that can just flat-out break power armor. Uh, well, yeah, now just more stuff. I was going to go for, like, if just in variety, more stuff, but now it's just, like, the sheer numbers. It's just way more stuff, too. But I suppose it does give them more against the stuff that can't, I suppose. Okay, so this has now been edge highlighted. There's one last step before that lower leg is considered completely finished for white armor, and that is the micron pen. So, okay. one hand get the cap off, which was a struggle. Make sure the tip still has some stuff to give. And, what I'm going to do. Let's put it in these, what I call the Death Star trenches. And it takes a little get in. And sometimes it'll mess up your edge highlight. And sometimes it'll just go in and maintain your edge highlight. Right now, however, with these ones, for some reason, it's not quite going in. So it's just. Huh. All right. It really depends on the model. Sometimes it works. Sometimes, it, like like up here, it's for the most part. Ooh, I went outside because I got too uh, aggressive. Oh, that just really darkened like everything. Okay, that's gonna take some cleaning later. Quite a bit of cleaning, if I'm gonna be honest. But it's it is fixable. So some of these work. Some, I suppose, are just gonna have. I'm just gonna have no oil it. So bottom one didn't really work. Top one technically worked, but I messed it up and made a mess. So we're gonna go to the back. This one pretty much always works. I just have to really like take my time to stay in 
the very thin line. Oh, it's getting stuck in the rim again over here. Yeah, it's very... Ah, oh, damn it. Went on the surface. It's very finicky. But when it works, it's great. It's real efficient. A little bit of pressure, as long as you can control it, does actually help fill it. See, there we go. So now that's nice and, you know... So, at least from first, you know, from the point you guys can see. I like it. I get this little... It's, it's because it's bent. It's bent to the knees, so the angle looks weird. And this is basically done. Um, if you want the micron pen areas, like in those little divots, because they're by themselves and it's very dark. If you want those lighter, what you can do is put just a weeny, teeny weeny bit of apothecary white in there. Um, as long as you do like a really thin bit, you know, just lay in it a little bit. So. That's white armor. Effectively. Uh, and I may darken the bottom of that kneecap a little bit more. I might do that now while you're watching. And I definitely gotta clean up that kneecap later. Where I where I wiped the micron pen. That was good. Good call. But as I keep saying, the cleanup point is always gonna be a lot of it. But if you do that part right, everything else you did leading up to that will look super sharp, super clean. Because it's easier to come in from the wide side than the thin side, if that makes any sense at all. Easier to come in with the matte white from the white side, from the wide, the wide side. We have tons of room to maneuver. And all you have to focus on is getting as sharply against the, the darker color you're cleaning. And that's how you get a lot, a lot more, uh sharpness on your on your highlights on your edge highlights on your shading which as I showed uh, can make a mess sometimes oh hey Drake they can be very messy we have people in chat it's a miracle and here I was thinking about calling it a little early because I'm tired and there was no one here but now someone here. We'll hang out. Have a good time. I think my music just ran out again. Oh, I gotta restart that. Music did run out again. I gotta get more music. I have a look just under an hour of appropriately licensed music ready to go. Where's my stream? There's my stream. I can see stuff. Alright. So where are we at? Where's this stuff? Okay. So yeah, did that lower leg to effective completion. So that outlines the steps on how to do, how I found the best way of doing real nice light armor. It's a lot of steps. I'll run them again here for Drake, because I like them. <laughs> uh, so you have your matte white primer slash base color, whatever. Oh yeah. Um... Yeah, found me on the Discord. Yay! Um, so you start with your white primer, matte white. Get get a matte white. Whatever you gotta do, get a matte white base. You shade with apothecary white contrast. You just be very careful about it. You do a very fine shade with a mixture, a uh, 211 of apothecary white, black templar, also contrast, and laminate medium. Real thin. I'll try to show on the camera again. Here, where's my brush as a pointer? So you do your apothecary white like flat along this angle, and then you'd go in with the tip and drag it with the, the mixture. I use a I I am currently trying out uh Steino Res. Let me get this up to the camera. Currently trying out Steinorez uh, uh, pre 
mixed for airbrush primer. I'm having mixed results, but I still can't tell if that is me getting used to an airbrush and priming with an airbrush. Also, ignore my nose. I've been... I was fine all day, and then all of a sudden I'm stuffy at night right when I wanted to stream. How dare. Uh, F's in the chat for my nostrils. <laughs> uh -huh. So I've been using this, and that gets... that That's been doing okay. I have no... So at first I was going thin, and I think my... My maybe my my application wasn't that good when I was doing a thin because it would dry and it would start cracking like uh, pottery glaze. It was weird. Which now that I think about it, I might use on purpose for texturing terrain and stuff. But it's it's not good for armor, obviously. <laughs> uh, yeah, airbrushing overall has been good for both of those. Um, like, I was using other stuff before that, but that stuff wasn't holding on that well. Um, this stuff's hold, held on better. Uh, this time when I went on a bit thicker. The problem is, with going thicker, is that everything I put on it after that has been drying darker and a little on the fuzzy side. Which I guess could also be a feature if you do it right. Like, if you, if you notice the red, while it has its corn... <sighs> My nostrils! Um, yeah, right, if you're doing Death Guard with the, with the, the Crackle, yeah, um, I wonder if I, no, I, f I think I fixed all the pieces that I had, I had, um, noticeable, I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to get the camera right now to focus in enough to show it anyway, uh, maybe I'll upload a, if I can find a picture of it, or something, or find a, something on it that I could take a picture of, I might post in the Discord later, uh, but if you notice the, um, Red here, yeah, it's supposed to be red. Uh, it's cornflake red, as I call it, in Agrax, but that's really dark. Uh, for some reason, everything dries on darker, and usually needs a few more coats uh, than, than I usually have. So I'm wondering if maybe, even though it's already on fairly thick, if I shouldn't do a quick coat of, like, this other thing I got. Um, Army Painter War Paints Matte White, maybe doing a quick coat of that after I do the primer going forward. I might try that on my next white scar. Need a cup of tea or something. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, well, you know what it was? Is I had like a really bad cold uh, like two weeks ago and there's just a tiny bit, and it's on occasion, it's on occasion, a tiny bit of a cough or a tiny bit of like uh, just congestion, like out of nowhere, even though it's been like over a week since I've been back on my feet like entirely. It's weird, I don't know. I don't know, I'm getting there. So, uh... So, yeah, anyway. You do the, um... You do the mix shade. And if you need really deep recess, you do known oil. And then for the edging, you do a clean edge. Uh, not clean edge. A clean highlight. So, like, a millimeter thickness. Of, uh... Corax white. To get, like, a little bit off-white along the... Along the lip. And then a fine edge highlight of white scar. Or whatever your preferred white uh edge highlight is because i know a lot of people hate white scar and like i said earlier i understand why there are good reasons for it um also since you mixed missed the drake i'll do i'll show you real quick the cowhide leather because i'm quite proud of it right on cowhide rawhide well i guess it's the same thing rawhide leather the morphine brown is your base so i get the camera to i need to get a better lens for or lens set up for future streams. Hoping that can hold well, it maximize. <laughs> yeah, you can kind of, kind of make it out. I think I could go a little more extreme on that, or maybe I put too much agrax. It's basically you morphing brown. You highlight. You do like a uh, a light highlight, as in you don't try to get opaque. You actually leave some transparent on purpose of pallid witch flesh for for the edges, and then. You do like a surface dry brush instead of like an edging dry brush, a surface dry brush of pallid witch flesh over all the surfaces of it. And if you do it, if you if you do it right, you'll notice that you get like a very rough uh, dry brush out of it, and then you agrax uh, all over it. Heresy era white scars. 
Is there much of a difference in painting a for a 40k and a 30k white scar? Like just just, just like just a basic, like just a basic uh, infantry guy, uh, tactical marine or whatever their version is. I forget. I go more extreme on the yeah, probably on the on the thing. Well, you know what it is is you can't see on it on the camera because you can't zoom in enough. But it actually has like a faux crackling on it. Uh, ironically, I think from the primer, so it actually looks really good in real life. The uh, leather. Um, this is actually probably the best I've gotten the leather come out. You just can't tell because of the camera. I got, I got, I was very rushed to get the stream up. I was trying to upgrade my router. Uh, it took like three hours, and at the end of the day, I found out that actually I didn't even need to. I was just over preparing, getting a better router that didn't work with anything else on the network. Uh, I had plenty of um, download and upload to do like a good quality stream. Didn't mean anything. Yeah, I think just the combination of primer and like the primer being thick and thus a little rugged, and um, and uh, the base method that actually it has a very. Um, it, 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 it works really well when this guy's done and I take pictures of it uh, and I post them later you'll you'll definitely be able to see. I wonder if actually hold on maybe I can maybe I can <laughs> effectively zoom and enhance let me try this oh yeah that's kind of working actually well kinda can't quite see the level of detail well, let me let me stretch this out even more is zoom in and enhance real? Let's find out. I'm gonna be like Kyle Hill right now. He said it don't work. Zoom and enhance is a fictional concept. You can almost see the levels of the detail that I'm, that I'm talking about. It's so hard to see. But uh, hey, I learned. I did. I did learn something today. Besides that, I need to continue to work on my entire production setup. Is that I can technically zoom in in OBS and get a get get more focus on stuff that that's good for later the focus just isn't going to be your friend if you zoom in via stream if you go manual focus yeah this already is focusing as much as i can with this current lens i got to i got to find a better lens setup um yeah, I, I have a bunch of lenses and stuff. It's just I, I ran out of time. It was, it was that or I was not streaming today. And you know what? Maybe I shouldn't have streamed today because I ended up all like phlegmy or whatever. But got to start somewhere. If I wait for everything to be perfect, I'm never going to start. You know, I've done that before. This isn't my first rodeo with uh, online productions. Something goes wrong. Something always goes wrong. You just got to get in the thick of it. If stuff goes wrong, you just deal with it. Because it's you're gonna get better at it later. It doesn't matter. Um, like the first time, this isn't even technically my first stream. This is my second first stream a month ago. I didn't realize that my mic, which it wasn't my studio mic at the time, at the time, it was my headset mic, had a weird ringing sound underneath all the talking. Very annoying. And I didn't have music in time to play in the background. This time I got I got some music. So, always, as long as you're always improving, I'm okay with a little stuff being wonky at the moment. Also, water. Yay. Yeah. Alright. So. Ugh, where are we at? So, I am getting a bit tired here. I do appreciate you coming on, Drake. I uh, appreciate the chatting. Um... But uh, I think I am going to wrap up. I'm at about two hours. Getting your camera in the right place. For you. Yeah, it's... it's um, yeah, I got mine on a tripod. Up into the... Uh, above and uh, left of my left shoulder. But it's like practically beside me. I'm trying to think of ways that I could fit it more behind me and more above me. This current tripod may not be able to go high enough. So I may have to put it on top of something, or I'm not entirely certain. But this angle is not the best because I have to constantly, I have to go from this in front of me, 
So then up, and I keep hitting the mic, and left, and then over the microphone, which is right there. And then, like I was, I had this whole thing, you missed this whole dialogue of, uh, or monologue, it's just me talking. This whole monologue of me going, get back in the frame with the model. I, I'd, I'd be like painting like over here, I'd go, back in frame, back in frame, get over the mic. Should I put laser, should I tape laser pointers? To the sides of my camera to show me where the frame is like like movies do like when you're interacting with cgi they got a little laser pointer like you got talk talk at a laser pointer <laughs> um so yeah i fixed the mic i got music uh i got much more open schedule than i did a month ago which was a big deal. So now I actually have enough time to reasonably work on my commissions in a, in a uh, appropriate timeline. And yeah, it's slowly getting better. I plan on streaming tomorrow at some point. Uh, probably earlier in the day, I'm thinking. And continuing this, either the White Scar, or it might be a new project. I gotta, I technically gotta get permission to see if I can stream it before I finish it. Uh, it would actually be me start, starting the very beginning of the project. Take me about a month or so to do it. But, um, it's got some fun details around it. It will be on YouTube somewhere, at some point. That's a guarantee. Uh, it's just whether or not I'll be streaming the creation of it is the question. While I'm at it, while you're here, let me show you the two I got. I got two finished. Ugh. All right. Uh, let's see. This is my test model, numero uno. This is where I really got down and actually I f this is where I found the rawhide recipe was on this guy I kind of just stumbled into it's really super easy so I really I really liked it for that and I wanted to share that in particular because it was just any and any skill level could do that um, do that and get pretty good results out of it because kind of like the, the randomness of the dry brush keeps it uh, nice and consistent looking also a little shout out for a little towel skull over there um, and then this was number two, and I'm working on number three, and that'll be the first squad of five, and then there'll be a second squad of five, and then a third squad of ten, and then some bikes, some blade guard, some characters, obviously the con is gonna happen. Uh, yes, um, the guy that gave me this condition gave me a veritable stack i'm not even joking like literally around a dozen maybe more white scars primaris upgrade kits i'm not even it's he wanted to make sure that there was a white scars uh specific pol uh pauldron the icon pauldron for every single person in the entire commission and it's like 30 something models uh, I wouldn't say army, it's more like a strike force. Like, it's basically like, it'll fill a 2k table. Rough. I haven't done the points on it, but it's basically, it's a, it's a decent battalion. You know, it's it's three squads, uh, two HQs, it's got the Primaris, uh, the, the chaplain on a bike. Um, blade guard, blade guard veteran, apothecary, two squads of bikes. Uh, I think, yeah, it's two... Yeah, it's two squads of bikes. At least one squad of blade guard. Might be two. I gotta check my notes. Actually, I got my notes right here. Hold on. Yeah, it's, it's like a solid battalion. Uh, let's see. 20 assault intercessors, 6 odd riders, a chaplain on bike, 3 blade guard veterans, blade guard ancient, apothecary, the con, and yeah, that's it. So, I wouldn't say full army. Uh, it, it's like a full game. But that's just me, like, when I think army, I'm thinking, like, decent collection size. Like, you're talking 3,000, 4,000 points. Like, that's an army. Where you can have options between your games. Like, that's an army. 
Uh, yeah, but also a decent amount of monetary dedication from his end. So it's all good. It's how, it's how you do it correctly. <laughs> you, you, weigh out, you weigh out your time with the costs. Um, it's all, it's all going to be at least this quality. The characters are actually going to be slightly higher quality than this. Um, which means I'm just going to be doing a crap load of wet blending to really draw out those details, you know, like the bird on Kasara Khan and all the gold and crap on the, on the chaplain. At least the chaplain, I have a crap load of experience, obviously, painting black I, because my main army is Raven Guard, so that guy's going to look perfect. <laughs> Everything else is like, wait, no, 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 this recipe is pretty good. I like this recipe. It's a lot of steps, but it comes out looking really good, and it's really easy to clean up because there's so many steps. Half the steps clean up after each other, so it's good. It's all good. Oh, thank you. I mean, it's, it's, I use a tier system for quality. <laughs> Tier one is like your uh, tournament stand, your tournament minimum of like three colors and a you know uh, throw on basing. Tier two is like you know uh, a, a, like base coat shaders and maybe a highlight here or there to like draw details. Tier three is this or parade quality basically, where it looks you know maybe not as clean but akin. To like the codex uh, model art you, you, you see from heavy metal I'm not gonna say this is anywhere near as clean as heavy metal but like at first glance you would think the same um, roughly and then tier 4 which would be the characters which is you know display piece like I said a lot of wet blending getting you know those details looking nice Oh yeah, he's seen some. He's seen pictures because I, I, I post everything, you know, on my Instagram, and that's that's one of the uh, terms of if you get commission with me, is one of the terms is uh, I get to you know use anything and everything I want of the process in the finished models for marketing purposes, um, you know I I need to, <laughs> so you need you need to be uh, willing to have your stuff online. And uh, he, he gets excited every time that he sees my, he's, sees his stuff posted. Which unfortunately has only been twice so far, but we're getting there. Not, you know, like I said, I, I really got my schedule opened up, made some big changes in my life, so I can do this pretty much full time pa between painting and I'll be doing a lot more streaming. Um, getting a lot of a lot of back phlegm. What the hell? Ah. Uh, so yeah, I've actually been painting like crazy. I painted and I painted uh, the base colors of this guy for I don't know how many hours yesterday. Uh, kept getting interrupted, but whatever. Um, I was painting till midnight last night. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I stopped. I stopped the day at midnight, but I, I'm normally up until like two or three in the morning anyway. Uh, so yeah, this is gonna. You're going to be seeing a lot more of this soon. Alright. It is now 10. I've hit 2 hours. I am going to call it. That's, you know, probably going to be the average length of these until I really get a lot more interaction. In. And I'd be painting more while talking right now. I'm just... I just feel, like, really tired all of a sudden. I just had a long day, I guess. Um, I'll probably paint work on this guy more off camera where, I, where it's a bit more relaxing but uh yeah yeah 4 a.m yeah that's that's like half the time when i go to sleep <laughs> oh jeez. you yeah. know so i'll let you go to sleep drake and uh i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna get off i'm gonna paint this more and then i'll figure out if either i'm painting my uh my own vanguard vets a bit later or if i'm gonna play some dark souls working on a uh working on a new guy so i can finally beat artorius so i can see the rest of the dlc i'd be in all three games i just uh i haven't beaten the artorius dlc because the only time i've gone into it was with a build that just literally could not beat it it was actually a uh, dark souls let's play i did on my first youtube channel way back in the day like in 2014 on uh if you want if you want to go watch it i'm not gonna say it's good it's i'm gonna say it's good quality 
but it's there it exists uh the, the later episodes aren't too bad um insert disc two disc with a c uh <laughs> and uh yeah you can watch me take a pyromancer build using the great scythe up against artorius and eventually being like i cannot this build cannot beat this guy like, you watched me go straight through all these other guys, no problem. Just ripped through the whole game. Couldn't be Arturus with that build. Something about that build just couldn't do it. So, I started a new guy, you know, just the other day. And I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna be Arturus. That's gonna be the point of this, of this build. So, <laughs> see if I work on that. Or uh, some Vanguard vets, one or the other. Alright, 1001, calling it. Like the stream if you like it. Subscribe if you love it. If you're obsessed with it, I got a picture in the description. I'm out.